Welcome everybody, my name is Tim Sandy and I'm a VMware Technical Partner Manager and Systems Engineer. In today's session I'm going to provide an overview of the vSAN assessment tool and how partners can use it to assist in showing your customers how vSAN can save them money while meeting their storage needs. So let's get started. So this is just a quick agenda of what I'm going to be covering. Uh, first off, I'm just going to do an overview of the vSAN assessment tool itself, what are the components, the flow of the assessment itself, and then I'm going to do a short demonstration of the assessment tool itself with some screenshots and then also in a live environment. And then finally just some good resources afterwards that you can use. So first up, some of you uh, may ask what is the purpose of the vSAN assessment program? So the objective of the assessment is to enable and incentivize partners with a repeatable process to access a customer's storage environment and identify vSAN opportunities for you to take advantage of. So what does the vSAN assessment tool do? It collects and analyzes data from the customer's existing vSphere storage environment to include items such as I.O. patterns. It also provides the following recommendations such as which VMs are suitable candidates for vSAN either for the hybrid or the all flash configuration of vSAN as well as sizing and hardware recommendations such as number of servers as well as the number of traditional hard drives and SSDs needed. It also provides an estimated storage capex or capital expense and opex operations expense savings with a total cost of ownership analysis and comparison. So the vSAN assessment can be easily accessed by going to www.vmware.com slash go slash vSAN assessment. So again, the vSAN assessment does a storage assessment of the customer's vSphere environment of their internal and external storage. It also provides a per VM statistic as well. The associated I.O. for both reads and writes. What kind of logical block addressing that they're using the amount of storage that they have, both used and available. The amount of I.O. throughput associated for each of them. So again, it gives you a lot of information and uh, recommendations based on the analytics that it does collect within that environment. So next on the agenda, we're going to cover the components. Components, uh, again, for the vSAN assessment tool are very simple. There's just two primary components. The first is the portal itself which is a public web app that receives data from the customer's environment, which is anonymous information. And the second is the actual collector, which is the virtual appliance that gets deployed into the customer's environment and then sends the data to the portal. And we'll talk more about these in the upcoming slides. So next, I'm going to cover just a very quick flow of the entire vSAN assessment process. The assessment starts off with the partner creating an assessment in the portal for the customer. Then they send an invite to the customer. The customer then accepts it and downloads the virtual appliance collector and installs it into their vSphere environment. Now this is something that the partner can help the customer with or they can do it themselves. It's very simple as we'll discuss shortly. Once the set number of days for the data collection is reached, it analyzes all the data and the portal then creates a report. You as a partner can then review and share the report with the customer once it is completed. But I do recommend that you review it first and yourself and then with the customer before ever giving it to them. So let's take a closer look at each one of these steps. So again, first off, uh, you're really going to have your meeting with the customer where you're going to discover a potential opportunity for vSAN. You most likely heard them make mentions related to hyperconverged storage solutions. Maybe they have storage issues, upgrades, and renewals. Or maybe they're outgrowing their existing storage and they need additional storage. So any one of those comments from the customer is definitely to help kind of clue you in that this may be a vSAN opportunity for you. This is where you can discuss vSAN and the benefits of running the vSAN assessment with them to provide them insight into their current vSphere environment and their storage. If they agree to let you do the assessment, you want to get some basic information from them, the company name, customer name, title, email address, their Salesforce customer ID and opportunity ID if you have it. And then you'll log in the vSAN assessment portal and input the customer information and send an invite to them to initiate the assessment process. Next, uh, you're going to install the virtual appliance uh, either with the customer, they can do it themselves again, it's very easy, which we'll show you. And at that point, 
the the collector will start collecting that data in their vSphere environment. So essentially how that works with that portion of the assessment is you know the customer is going to receive an email invitation from you that you sent to them from the vSAN assessment portal. They then download the OVA for the appliance along with an associated key. This key associates that specific appliance to the data out onto the assessment in the portal. The customer installs the appliance, enters in their assessment key, the vCenter server information, the length of time in which to collect data. I do recommend that you talk to the customer about that. The minimum that we recommend is seven days. That way you get good data collected, good average. You can run it longer, uh, but I but don't do it any shorter than seven days. So make sure you talk to them about that, especially if they're going to be deploying the appliance themselves so they know what to set it to. Once they finish deploying it, the appliance starts collecting anonymized data and sends it to the portal. When the collection time frame is up, the portal then analyzes all the data and creates a report. Once that report is created, the appliance is powered off and deleted from disk. Then at this point, the partner is going to get notified that the report has been finished. You'll receive an email that the report is completed. Again, I highly recommend that you go uh, that you look at the report first, pull out the important information from it and related to your conversations with your partner, and then share it and do a review of the report with your customer. I don't recommend sharing the report before you've actually gone through it with them. While reviewing the report, you can change some of the numbers and the tools to show how the results changes uh, the calculations as needed. You can adjust the number of VMs, host clusters, failures to tolerate, and much more as needed. Make sure you review the vSAN ready nodes that the report is based off of, as well as the results of the sizing requirements, which is the most important output of the, for the customer. We advise not going too deep into the settings of the tool. Those default settings are already put in there. This could only confuse the customer with too much information and it may be counterproductive to your presentation and assessment with the customer. After the review is completed with the customer, you can send the link uh, to them so that they can play with the tool and make some adjustments to the numbers if they do wish to do that. But again, I wouldn't do that until you've completely gone through and discussed it with them. So now let's go into the demo. Again, we're going to start off. I'm just going to be showing you some screen captures to begin with for some of the initial steps, and then I'm going to roll over into the actual live environment for showing you the actual results in that report. So starting off for the partners, you want to go out to the link https colon slash slash vip.vmware.com slash go slash sales sign up. That's where you're going to create your account for the vSAN assessment tool. Once you've created the account, this will allow you to go in and then create vSAN assessments for your customers and send it to them. As you see here, once you've signed in, this is the main dashboard. And uh, any existing assessments that you have are going to be listed here. And as you see, we've got some demo ones listed. And then to create a new assessment for a customer, you're just going to click on that new assessment button there in the upper right hand corner. Once you've clicked on the new assessment button, it gives you the choice of what kind of assessment that you want to do. Please be sure that you select the start button under the vSAN assessment and not the vCloud suite assessment. Two different assessments, two different VMs get deployed, different data collected, so make sure you are selecting the vSAN assessment. Now you'll need to fill in a few bits of information on the customer. First give the title of the assessment. I would recommend just using the company name for that. That way there's no doubt on who this assessment is for. Again, uh, as for your company name, just use the same thing there. Customer's email address. I do recommend that for this, that you discuss with your contacts at your customer to maybe put the email address of whoever the technical resources that would actually be installing vSAN assessment appliance into, your, into their vSphere environment. If you have a Salesforce customer ID and opportunity number, you want to fill those in. Uh, if you don't have an opportunity number, you just put 00001 in there or something to that nature uh, that's unique for that particular customer. Then select the customer facing assessment if doing this for an actual customer. As you see here, there is an option for 
you as a partner, if your admins kind of want to learn how the assessment works, how to deploy the appliance, the information collected and everything, there is an SE testing assessment radius button there. But again, for customers, you're going to make sure that you're doing that customer facing assessment, which should be selected by default. But you do have that other option to do an SE testing one. Then you'll be provided with the key to be used for that customer's assessment. This associates again that installed collector appliance to the actual assessment in the portal. Here's an example of what the email looks like that the customer is going to receive. Once they receive that email, they're going to click on the view assessment link, which will then take them out to the portal for their assessment. Then the customer logs in with their login information provided to accept the invitation of the acceptment the assessment by clicking accept invite. Once logged in, it takes them to their assessment where they see this view and the ability to download the collector appliance OVA which is approximately one gigabytes. So they're going to go ahead and click on the download the collector appliance to download it. When deploying the appliance and finishing up this process, the customer is going to enter their key and clicks the unlock button which allows them to download and install the appliance itself. Then they're going to select whether they want to do the assessment on a per VM basis or per cluster basis uh, and save the preferences. So they can, if they're only really looking to do it for a specific environment, say they have an infrastructure environment and a VDI environment, and they're looking to do it for just the VDI environment, they can select that specific cluster. Or if they just want to do it against all the VMs or some VMs, they have their choice there. During the install, they are going to be asked how many days that they're going to do the collection for. Again, the minimum is going to be seven that we recommend. It can be longer, but uh, seven is a good solid number to get some good number and good analysis information out of their environment. Then the customer inputs their vCenter server fully qualified domain name, or FQDN, associated administrative username and password for their vCenter server. So again, this is why I recommended potentially sending this email invite to the customer's technical resource that's going to be installing it. At this point, the appliance is configured and it starts collecting data on the customer's environment for however long that you selected, like I said, that seven days or more, and it starts collecting that data. So once the data has been collected for the associated amount of days, it then builds that report. Once that report is completed, again, it will notify the partner of this and this is a view of what you're going to see in the report. So now at this point I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch over to the actual demo portion. So here as you see we have the main assessment dashboard where we have some existing assessments here. We have the new assessment button where again I showed you in the screen captures where you, this is where the partner goes in and uh, goes to invite a customer with an invite to the assessment. Some basic information here, uh, company name, uh, the assessment name, the start date of the assessment, the type, whether it's the vSAN or the vCloud Suite. Again, make sure you do the vSAN. Then here, each one of these bubbles, as you see, they're either a brightly covered blue or some of them are grayed out, like a light color bluish gray here. What this is, is these are the, the core steps of the assessment process. So as you step through the assessment process as far as sending out the invite, them accepting it, them installing the OVA and it starting to collect all their data, you'll see that the bubbles will start to fill in across as you get further along the steps. But at this point what I want to do is I want to bring up a assessment with the associated report. So you can see what the report actually looks like the information in it and how you can make modifications to the data if need be. So initially you come into this environment analysis it will give you a summary at the top here how many hosts were analyzed, how many VMs in the environment, VMs analyzed, powered off VMs which are 12 in this case, VMs not analyzed are 12 because they were powered off, and then the number of days that they had collected and what those dates were. So this assessment was ran for seven days, the recommended time frame. Now based on the information that was collected and analyzed, they recommend that this particular environment that you use the all flash vSAN configuration. Now as you see here, there's also the hybrid vSAN which is grayed out because it's not the recommended. It recommends the all flash, so that's why that's white and has a check mark there. So that's the recommendation. So again, this is just kind of like a quick summary of information here on recommended VMs for vSAN. 
the usable capacity with dedupe and RAID 5.6, uh, usable capacity. So there's a lot of general information here. Scrolling down, it, you have the list of recommended VMs that are recommended for vSAN. And then the VMs without data is essentially those 12 that were powered off because they, the collection of data was not done on those for being powered off. So let's take a look at the storage capex savings. So I clicked on that. If you scroll down here now, we now have a per VM profiling information. So number of VMDKs, VMDK sizes, the memory, snapshots, read percentage, IOPS, such as that. But let's really get into the actual uh, sizing calculator and TCO tool for it, because this is really where the information that we're wanting to look at. This is the really the meat and potatoes of this assessment. So starting off, what we're going to do is we're going to decide what the customer is using this environment for. Are they using it for server virtualization or desktop virtualization? So in this example, we're going to go with server virtualization. But if you are doing it on a VDI environment or VDI cluster, you would change it to that because that that will skew the numbers, obviously. So we start off and we look at the, uh, the basically the profile for the VMs. Okay, uh, again, there's some basic information in here, number of VMs, number of VMs per host, the uh, number of VMDKs per VM, the size of them, number of CPUs, memory, failures to tolerate, the RAID level, number of snapshots that you expect, read percentage, IOPS per VM. If you're going to have different VM profiles, for example, let's say you have two basic VM profiles in your infrastructure. You have one which is for business critical applications. They typically have much larger VMDK sizes. They are populated with multiple vCPUs, like maybe four, because it's a database server. And then the memory is maybe you know 12 or 18 gigs of RAM. Again, because these are more business critical, SQL databases, Exchange, stuff like that, that requires a lot more resources. So you may have a VM profile for that, and then you have kind of a, a standard plain Jane profile for a VM which is two virtual CPUs, eight gigs of RAM, and say 100 gig VMDK. So you can create multiple additional uh, VM profiles that caters to that particular customer's environment if needed. So again, down here, you'll see that it's select VMs and usable capacity required. You can go ahead and fill in this information. It does it by default for you. But again, these can be adjusted as need be, and that's appropriate for that particular customer and their environment. Whether or not you want to use deduplication and compression, again, with the all flash version, you can enable those uh, features to get much better usability storage space uh, because of the deduplication and compression. This is going to be set to use it by default. Again, you can adjust your estimated deduplication ratio, but right now it's set at two, and then the total usable space required after is 2.1. So you see that we have, as we go through this calculator and TCO report, there's already pre-configured information, but they can be modified if you have specific information tailored to that user's environment and you want to adjust that to make the the actual results and the numbers more accurate for that customer. So now let's go to the ready node configuration. Now being that we're talking about vSAN, we have vSAN ready nodes which are on the hardware compatibility list. That means the physical server, the controller card, and all the associated hard drives are all on that vSAN hardware compatibility list. So these are pre-built certified vSAN ready nodes. As you see here, it pre-selected based on the information it collected, this all flash version, the AF-8 series, which gives you 12 terabyte of raw data per node and up to 80,000 IOPS per node as well. But as you see, there are several different versions of the all flash. So depending on the customer, their environment, what their wishes are, you can adjust this as need be. But again, it's going to, in this case, select this particular one off the bat for you. And as you see here, it's going to again fill in uh, some certain information based off this particular ready node. And this particular ready node has two physical CPUs per server. Each one has 12 cores per CPU. Number of dry bays is 24, so on and so forth. Now, if you want to build your own vSAN ready node, you can do that. 
as long as again all the hardware components are on the hardware compatibility list for vSAN and then you can adjust these numbers but again throughout this you it pre-fills in the information based on the information that it has gathered and, and what it recommends and then you have the option to change any of this information as need be so you can change items even such as uh, if you're providing your if you're providing your partner a hardware discount, you can put that in there. If you know the server price after the discount, you can put that in there. So again, there's a lot of information that you can adjust in here to make the numbers more accurate. So let's go to the sizing result. Here it gives you a summary of what the recommended vSAN ready nodes uh, as far as, as you see in the top left corner here, starting with hosts. Contributing to storage are 70. Flash devices per host are going to be 2. Minimum recommended flash device size is 288 gigabytes. Now for for the capacity tier total in gigabytes and then the uh, the caching tier, the caching tier should be 10% of whatever your capacity total is. Based on that 10%, it's basically selected this 288 gig size SSD requirement. Total storage capacity in the cluster is going to be 806 terabytes. The persistent disks per disk group are going to be six. So these could be either SSDs if it's an all hybrid like it does recommend or if it did recommend the, uh, excuse me, all flash. If it recommended the hybrid, then these would be traditional spinning disks. And then it gives you total number of objects that you can contain within that cluster. Then it breaks down the storage. Uh, so after one host failure, you're going to see here's information. Inaccessible capacity is going to be 11.52. And then additional free space after one host failure is going to be that 789 gigabytes. If all hosts are active, obviously you're going to have much more. So again, this kind of gives you a breakdown of that. And then as far as the uh, individual nodes and the nodes in the cluster, you're going to see here where for virtual SAN node, you're going to have one node, VMs uh, per CPU, the capacity disks, flash caching devices, disk groups, so on and so forth. It gives you the per node and then per cluster. And then it also gives you for these particular vSAN ready nodes that it selected, it's telling you you have two CPUs and they're their Intel Xeon E5 2670s. So it gives you all that information. Now for the TCO inputs. Now for total cost of ownership or TCO, again, we're looking typically when we're talking about storage, when you're buying a any type of storage, whether it's a SAN and NAS or in this case virtual SAN, typically you're looking at a five-year TCO for it. That's usually uh, the life cycle for SAN hardware. It depends on the customer. It could be three. Most either are going to do three or five. And then for a storage array refresh, number of years, they've got it set to three. And then the server refresh, those actual nodes are going to be three as well. So all these pre-filled information is based upon industry standards that we've seen. Now, these numbers and standards can be adjusted. You can go into the settings and adjust them. But again, when you're going through the report and the analysis of the information, I wouldn't recommend showing that to the customer because you can kind of go down a rabbit hole on that. Stick with the standard numbers from the industry standards. That is our recommendation. Unless you really need to specifically change something like the customer has said, I know how much this particular server is going to cost me or anything else where they have exact numbers, then you can plug them in to get more accurate numbers. So then the next step is licensing and storage solutions. We add in the licensing cost. Again, we put by default the uh, BSAN Advanced because we're doing the all flash. If you're providing a licensing discount, you can put that in. Total list price per CPU, it shows here how many licenses you're going to require for those 70 VMs. Since there's two processors, it's going to be 140. Service and support, again, you can select either the one or the three year you can choose to not have it in the pricing and then you go down as far as the storage solution type again it's the all flash are you going to use fiber channel any discounts for the solution per your support the support period and then you can also do usable capacity you can put that in there and then it gives you all your costs here opex assumption now here's an example where, again, we've got a lot of industry standard information inputted into here already. So as you see here, labor cost OPEX. We're using industry standard labor costs per man hour. Now if the customer comes to you and says, 
my man hour is X. You can go into the settings and you can change that to make the information more accurate for the information. Another example would be uh, the power and cooling OPEX. So if they know exactly they're being charged per watt per hour, you can go ahead and make those changes in there. So if they know the kilowatt cost per hour, they can change that. So again, this gives you all this information. Uh, also, you know, again, the, here's the power and cooling section. Here is the task savings section. This is where basically the time savings from an operational standpoint of your virtual admins of deploying and managing virtual SAN compared to deploying and managing a traditional SAN. So this gives you all of your OPEX savings here. So when we go to the overall TCO savings, you're going to see that here we have CapEx savings. It gives you your total costs, your uh, price per usable gigabyte, your deduplication and uh, compression ratios, cost per VM, cost for IOPS. Then we have the configuration summary, host nodes per array, total raw capacity, terabytes, usable capacity, max IOPS. Then we have the five-year TCO results here gives you the savings for capex, opex, your total cost of ownership, and then for usable gigabyte, VM, and IOPS. Now you can also download these in a graphical presentation as well. And then here we go down individual graphs for the first year of capex, then we go to the five year of TCO metrics, VM savings per year, and then we have this TCO without vSAN and TCO with vSAN comparison. With these results, again, if you go up to the top here, one, you can download a graphical representation of these. But then up here, you can also save this down into a PowerPoint. And then what you can do is instead of actually walking this through with a customer to where you don't inundate them with the information, you can download it, put the information into the PowerPoint, and then just present the information to the customer that you want to present that's associated to what they've been talking about and what their needs are for storage. So this is uh, really it for the vSAN assessment tool. As you see, the process of inviting a customer to the assessment, the assessment actually deploying the appliance, collecting the data, and then the reporting you can see how easy it is one to do the assessment for your customers but as well as how powerful and how much information we're providing you from an individual and a total cost of ownership aspect on everything regarding your hardware cost your software cost your power consumption costs man hours for doing the day-to-day -day operational tasks associated so it gives you a complete overview so you can see that this tool is very powerful has a lot of information sometimes it can be too much information so that's why I advise maybe downloading to a PowerPoint and presenting it to them in that fashion and only presenting the information that is important to that customer and what I'd like to do is just provide you with a little more information. Here again is some information, some web links, and also an email address for you as a partner to reach out to get assistance on the vCenter assessment tool. So as you see, we have the email address, amer-inside-vsan at vmware.com. We also have the blogs as well as partner portal and the VMware assessment itself. And then just to talk about Partner Central real quick, you as a partner have a Partner Central login. We have various different assessments besides the vSAN assessment tool. We also have the vSphere optimization assessment and the SysTrack assessment for desktops for VDI environments. All of those have a page out in Partner Central. Now, if you look at the image on the right hand side of this slide, this is what the page looks like for the vSAN assessment without an in Partner Central. In the upper right hand corner of that image you're going to see there in that red box I have the, it has the Virtual SAN Starter Kit. Now use a partner I highly recommend that you go out to this portal here download the Starter Kit. The Starter Kit will give you all of the PowerPoint templates, information associated to doing a vSAN assessment as well as uh, email it templates to send out to partners to invite them and to drive interest, everything that you could possibly need. Then if you look on the inside and where those blue bars are, they basically have broken the assessment down into four major steps. Engage, install, show, and learn. And then under each one of these sections, as you see, I broke them out on the left-hand side. So in the upper left-hand side, starting off with engage. 
You'll see here that under a gauge you have vSAN 6 email and call script for partners. Then you have virtual SAN sales play kit for Horizon of VDI use cases. Three questions to identify and qualify vSAN opportunity. The sales briefcase. And then also the VSP SDS sales training, which I highly recommend that you're doing that you end up doing that before doing vSAN assessments. And then email templates to invite your customers. Then when you go down to the next step, which is the install. Again, it has the link to the sales sign up. Also the instructions on installing the tool, customer facing blog, vSAN assessment tool, frequently asked questions. Uh, there's also training, there's a recording on it as well. And then the support, vip-support at vmware.com. So a lot of good information and then you go to the show it has information related to that and then finally the learn. So in the learn section you have how to sell for partners, again the VSP SDS sales training and then vSAN assessment training. So as you see this vSAN assessment tool portal in Partner Central it's very important that you go out there, download the starter kit, download all the associated information and tools, watch the trainings. It will give you everything you need in order to do the vSAN assessment as well as do our other assessments like the VOA and the SysTrack that I talked about. So with that, that completes the presentation on the vSAN assessment tool. I hope this was very informative and I hope you learned something. If you have any additional questions about the vSAN assessment tool, I do recommend that you reach out to your VMware team or your associated corporate reseller or distributor to get more information from the VMware team there. I want to thank you for joining me today and have a wonderful day.